we pretty much already cracked open the Microsoft story. Um, hey, Wooly. Mm-hmm. So uh, this weekend you're going to be running brackets? Might might run a bracket. Might might yeah. might, might no, not running it, but uh, I'll, I'll participate certainly. You'll help. Oh, you're, you're okay. I'm not going to. But run you've it. run brackets in the past. I right? have run brackets in the past. Yes. It's hard, right? It's tricky. There's a lot of things yeah. to consider. There's some some tricks to consider. <laughs> uh, <laughs> F's in the chat. If that's your group, <laughs> if you're in group, so F. Yeah, like, so if you were making a bracket, right, you wouldn't want to put every killer into the same pool and then put people from the same sponsor in the same pool and then put all the people from one region into the same pool would you so this is this one this is a weird this is a weird <laughs> one right because what you're doing at all times is uh balancing against location seating against location and seating against you know certainly performance um, in, in many cases. So the story here is Capcom Cup X, the, the big one with the, with the, the million dollar prize. The drawing for the, for the different pools have been finalized and uh, of the 48 players that are going to be competing, they've all been grouped up into you know different uh, smaller groups. Uh, group F in particular, there's always the talk of like you know pools of death or the, 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 you know, the, the hell, the hell groups and stuff, but Group F in particular has, uh, yeah, it has Mena, it has Kaba, it has uh, Nero the Boxer, Lashar, Ending Walker, and Angry Bird, um, for, uh, and and that is people that are easily projected to potentially take the whole thing. <laughs> Could have been <laughs> that your quarterfinals. An insane uh, uh, amount of people to have in one group. Um, com by comparison, a lot of the other groups tend to have you know two or so names that you'd think uh, uh, that, that would be expected or projected to go uh, particularly far. So, um, yeah, that's a really, really rough uh, uh, situation. How it got here is, I mean, there's a series of multiple events it takes to qualify to get to these um, these points. And then, like, essentially, the, the short version of it is that there's um, the placement for each uh, spot was more about the region being represented than the actual uh, best players. Period across the yeah, world. they wanted they wanted a regional like everyone play Street Fighter around the world kind of situation. So you were qualifying online for your region as number one. So areas like uh, uh, the U.S. and Japan and Korea, who would probably flood the fucking yeah. like top sixteen, got to send. Two people each. So there's a so there's a there's a discussion that goes into this, which is what are you aiming for? Are you looking for the best player? Or are you looking for uh, the best representation of of a region, right? And it seems with this, and this is a you know, a, a, yeah, it, because of the way it's 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 set up, they're looking for the best region representation, not necessarily the best player. Period. Um, it would be insanely stacked in the certain areas that are like heavily. Like if it was Japan, Japan would need to get you know uh, uh, more, or you'd expect to see more uh, entrance there. Um, and the thing as well that they want to avoid is in the past when you'd have um, well, if you'd have a regional, but it was still open to the anyone outside the region. If someone was a sponsored player or just like a highly you know experienced person that had the ability to travel, they could travel to any region globally win that because the competition was much lower compared to what was going on in the re, uh, the, the region and then pretty much be shoot in a slot, right? This Yeah, is so like if you were a pro player who were getting paid to fly around, you could get a lot of seed points whereas some uh, guy who lives in Thailand who doesn't have a passport. Yeah, so you can just can't. exactly go to South America, you know, take it, take the, take the dub, get in there. Furthermore, um, not only is that something that like, you know, is one of the considerations and you have to kind of decide from the jump are you okay with that or not right if you if are you okay with it just being like uh you know open regardless and the region is mainly about making it a somewhat more accessible for people there but there's still people that can come in and snipe it uh the second thing that becomes a possibility is if the rules support uh people coming in and essentially like blocking so if you know that you're like you've already gotten your spot but you want to increase your chances later you can enter if uh, uh, and potentially deny 
someone else that would make it to the to the finals a chance by getting in if you beat them here at the regional yeah. level instead, right? So there's a whole lot of like sub considerations that go into like how and why this is kind of set up. Um, if you want your goal to just be like, yeah, to the wolves it is. At the end of the day, let it let chaos reign, let let make chaos take the world. Um, you can do it that way, and but Capcom was trying to not have that happen. The result, though, is you get this plus the seating, which it seems like... It was done by Bingo Wheel. It seems like it was... <laughs> well, so in a lot of cases, um, you it, they'll, they'll be random. You just you go random with it, and then um, if you want the randomizer to consider flags so that people from the same regions don't end up being together if possible, and if you want them to take the heaviest... Uh, by performance in the in a given season and spread those apart as well you get the you know best distribution of skill while also avoiding team kills and people who travel mm -hmm. around the world to land back here or sit down and fight against each other which uh you know has it, it, like that that happens to me constantly that's a thing but um, so like isn't the reason that mena and kava are right next to each other despite being good pals and on the same team because one of them moved um yeah so men is in the states right that's the uh that's that's um and and, and kappa's representing the dr uh well i mean they, they both represent the dr but like yeah he's coming from a different uh region that's hilarious mm -hmm. <laughs> so being in being in us east means you're gonna exactly this this is gonna uh, occur as well as a possibility um, so yeah, it, it, it's it when you look at it, like especially for them, anyone who's looking at it, who's here in that that like that seems that seems really shitty because like it also results in um, so you get one a pool that looks like it could be easily the semi the semi or, or you know or quarterfinals, and then there's also things where it's like um, there's an LC there's a last chance qualifier and um the bracket for that last chance qualifier that bracket is fucked up problem x won right uh <laughs> yesterday but like uh, punk didn't make it in um there were and, and there were a number a number of other like people that were expected uh, as well to like make it that that were not so it is basically a and a, there, you have to look and go like okay capcom is not looking for the best player they're looking for and Kakaru as well. That's it. Yeah, Tokido. Um, it, it, it's not so, but they're they're not looking for the best player. They're looking for the best region representative, and that's not the same thing, you know. Um, once you announce your bracket like this, and it's public and it's out there, and this is what you've clicked and 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 you know sent out. You can't go and and re no, it's too late. You can't do no you changes. Can't, you can't change it if you so like you know I've, Snake Eyes, the only Zangief player in the entire thing. You're just gonna have to live in the bracket with three DJ mains. You're just gonna have to, <laughs> just gonna have to make it work. Um, the uh uh, yeah, I saw I saw the clip. Yeah, there's a clip. There's some great clips. There's a funny clip of Gachi Kun freaking the fuck out watching on stream. Um, yeah, Punk like made the right response to blocking a Blanca ball, but he was in burnout and he misjudged the distance to the corner of the screen and thus it, it ended up getting blocked when he did his... his yeah, little mistakes. Little, little things, you know, but you're when you're playing, when each of these decisions is for a fucking million dollars, oh, <laughs> God, it's, so it's, it's heavy. It's tricky because, um, like, they don't want the best player. They want it to be a more global phenomenon because everybody loves Street Fighter all over the world. But the scrutiny on this is so much higher than usual because it's for a million fucking dollars. It is. It is right. It's the. It's gonna. Pull, it's gonna pull the eyeballs. That's exactly what the goal is, right? Um, and it's also a bit weird because they announced too as well as they've been showing off like some of the new Ed stuff as well. They did say in advance that hey, Capcom Cup's gonna be focused on the gameplay, so we're not going to be making any new announcements there. Although it's like that's weird. But that's the place that everyone's gonna look. <laughs> that's, everyone's gonna be looking. That's the at time. It. Why would you not show anything? There? That's weird. I guess they just weren't ready. You know, they did, instead of holding the Ed stuff back, they decided to you know pop it up now, and then they just said, yeah, we're gonna not have anything there but yeah that's where a lot of attention is going to be paid um anyway i think yeah for most people that are that are you know used to again the usual competitive circuit you're like you want the the best players up against each other certainly and and um it is true that there are 
um, and uh, Sejam made a good point of how um, when you have more qualifiers that are um, offline, um, that's kind of the excitement that people are looking for. That's the, those are the most hype things. Mm -hmm. When you have more online qualifiers, you do get a bracket that resembles the actual top list of players. But that's kind of what most online um, qualifiers look like anyway. And it, it is true that um, it, the... Capcom Cup and uh, all the events leading up to it would not look any particularly <coughs> different than most of the other kinds of online qualifiers mm -hmm. that you see on a regular basis anyway, or like stuff for Kumite, uh, for Red Bull that goes on as well with that they have these events building up. There, There is sort of a, like, at a big event online, you're going to see a lot of the same matchups occurring over the time, over the course yeah. of, you know, what is essentially a season. There's only so many of the best players in the world. So you do get something unique about this approach. Um, plus, again, defend, like empowering the region over the, the performance of the player. But yeah, it, it's um, as long as everybody watching understands that part of it, you know, there's a, it, it's not necessarily going to be a fair like it's not going to be a fair representation of the strongest you know that's that's where your 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 other majors come into play there's a a great um video on this subject by a friend of the show uh gerald over at corey gaming uh called finding out who's the best hmm. uh and he goes into uh the the realities of running single elimination or double elimination and why you would do that and if I remember correctly, part of that video is like, hey, do you want a completely fair tournament in which you find out who is the absolute best? You have to run a round robin tournament in which every single person plays every single person yes. and then tally up the points. Yeah. One, it's, that takes forever. Yes. Two, it's, it's called God's Garden. Right. You can do that. Japan has their long running series where you sit and do a first to ten with fucking everybody <laughs> it, you, and there is just, no you, definitive stone left unturned we know you're the best so the there's two problems one that takes forever like that takes an insane length of time and two you don't have like your 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 grand finals are tallying up their golf scores at the end of the day on a fucking piece of paper ultimately. and it's not dramatic yeah it, it it's not it's not the uh, the pyramid to the top certainly there's an, there's, a, there's a, a spectacle and an excitement aspect to it so the, like um, the purity of a well, they, mm -hmm. did you ever watch golf back when tiger woods showed up probably not right? not really just highlights and stuff you know so watching golf when tiger woods showed up took an already boring sport and made it completely unwatchable mm. because golf tournaments are like four rounds over four days and you would get into the situation where Tiger would be so many strokes ahead by day two that you could just turn it off. Yeah. Because it would be numerically impossible yeah. for anyone to catch up. There's no tension. There's no there's no journey to go on. Mm -hmm. It was awful. It was awful. Um yeah, I saw a couple of videos of him actually uh showing off like how not not just how good he is at like his swing and shit, but how good he is at stopping mid swing. Mm -hmm. And like getting halfway down and canceling, <laughs> and it's like that is an impressive skill in and of itself. Um, anyway, though the so yeah, there's there's a there's an understanding that you kind of have to trade off uh, the idea, the pure ideal of the the best and the most competitively uh, untainted environment. And you, but then along the way, you have to you go. Okay, what concessions do we make that are more exciting, that are more spectator friendly, that are that are you know fun to watch, etc. And that what and, and that accomplish the secondary goals of what this tournament is supposed to be. Like we already make a, a massive concession with double elimination, right? Double elimination is objectively more fair than single elimination. Yeah. But single elimination tournaments are crazy. They are so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's batshit and bullshit, but yes, you you one and done. You get random now. There's no chance to learn. You roll the dice. It is what it is, right? The, the a lot of the the concept of these games too, as well, is the 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 evolution of the matchup. Things what we learned. Things that I conditioned early on in how I can counterplay you in the long term. You know, 
if you sit down and play a game of poker with everybody over the course of hours, that's different from getting up and sitting at a different table every round, you know? It's just it's just not the same thing. Um there's also, uh, we, I mean, over the course of this podcast, there's been tons of discussions about like, okay, where you balance the moments where the spectator and what the audience wants to see is in direct opposition to what the participant wants to see and or uh, the, the players would want. Um, bullshit like training stage, right? Things like, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, the and some of the longer formats as well and, and so on are... There's there's these moments where you have to kind of choose what to do, but I think I think in in general the um, the feeling of not having people block and travel to to nuke the region seems pretty understandable. Like I like that. yeah, no, that's that's like I appreciate the the level of fucking pure hater that it takes to travel <laughs> to a different country to knock someone out of a tournament and then leave. Um, but you have to like, like while putting that in place, you probably have to find a system of like point qualification or, or an extra way to like, uh, stack the, uh, not stack, but to have the regions that are stronger have more representation based on the number of players that you would expect to show up there. You know, uh, you would have to find ways to, um, when you're doing your seating, actually go wait the region wait the um and then wait the points by performance mm -hmm. as you go through everything you know and then i don't know that i mean there's different challenge there's different tournament bracket makers so there's challenge and smash uh, well, start.gg and all these things have their own way of doing it the tournament uh, uh bracket makers we used to use back in the day were kind of simplified and like you could honestly like look at it and just kind of like um in advance looking at the player pool just go okay these ones here put mm -hmm. these 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 people should not be in the same pools okay these people here are like traveling from this place or whatever even though well these two have the like, similar or relatively close performance or so and they're from the same region they should be on opposite ends of the bracket etc cetera, etc cetera. and like then run it that way you know um but once but as i was saying once you once you're out and you publicize this the moment you go actually we're going to fix it and change it you now have no, fucked no, with you can't do that the, the thing that somebody already the chances someone already had and that's yeah you can't you, do it can't put it back in the bottle you know like, you know, let's say uh, next week they're like, oh, we're going to move the bracket around. It's like some people are already just watching hours and hours and hours and hours of their new opponent's matches. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I saw so somebody that if you switched it, they wouldn't even encounter. Um, in the end, I understand when you have a goal that's not the that's more about the region representation you could that's you could, if you want to do that you can have those and in the same way you can have like uh, uh invitationals that are not about the open bracket thing those mm -hmm. there's a place for that too as well for whatever you're trying to market but um the thing where the most money the most prize punny money is on the line it certainly feels weird to have it be like one where you're not getting the people that you expect are going to win evo in a couple months time you know like that mm -hmm. is that is strange yeah uh, anyway, so I, I guess that that's uh, that's one of those FGC stories that cracked into. Shout out to Group F. It cracked into the mainstream there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that aside, um, and I remember when I was uh, when I was initially uh, talking with Reggie about this too. Like I I I, I didn't quite understand uh, um, some of the details about what was off with it in the sense that like. Um, you do well anyway like there's there is something where like if you look at a, a person that you're expecting uh is gonna make it in and they had a number of chances but then ultimately didn't perform and then and that's the way it shook out like mm -hmm. um that you gotta hold that right there's a part of this that is like you you had opportunities and you didn't make it yeah to sorry too bad that so does sad. occur um but yeah but then there's then there's the the element of like but would this person have then trounced every single other like bracket winner here you know uh, in in the other regions and then ultimately to the top 16 if so then we got to consider more slots yeah 